What have I got for you today? Um, I got an update on one of my tarantulas, actually two updates to do today, and I've got two tarantulas that need rehousing. So here we go. Hello Tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. Um, one of the updates that I wanted to give you, back in June I purchased um, four Tarina Pelma Sazimai, which are otherwise known as the Brazilian Blue um, Tarantula. And um, I was really, really excited about these. I haven't heard a whole lot about them and uh, I did learn about them from um, Tom's Big Spiders. And uh, I was really anxious to get a hold of some of these. So I got lucky, I got them on a buy one, get one, and I ended up getting four of them. But I was real worried about them because they were really, really small when I first got them. But they seem to have been doing well. These guys are very feisty and uh, they, they, they're kind of skittish. Um, but once they kind of establish themselves in their home, then they usually just kind of settle in. They do tend to burrow into the substrate and they get their little burrow and they kind of stay in there. And they'll come out at night and venture out looking for food and so on. When I first started um, with these, I was feeding them fruit flies. But I've gotten them up to the point, I think I've, what, I've had them four and a half months. And I've gotten them to the point where they're starting to take down their own prey. Um, after the fruit flies, I switched to small roaches, small discoid roaches, and I would crush the heads and put them in there, and they're real good about coming in and getting that, that uh, dead roach and feeding on it. So every morning I would take a look at them and they would be gone. They would have eaten them. So let's take a look at them. Let me go ahead and show them to you. Now this is just one. But he seems to be, this, seems, this one seems to be my biggest one. So probably a good specimen to show you. <clears throat> Alright, and there he is. Not really all that exciting to look at. That's your typical spiderling there. And um, he doesn't have any color to him yet. It, it hasn't gotten any um, of its real hairs yet. Um, right now it still looks like most of your New World spiderlings very colorless, very, very drab, but when they do get older they will develop these um, iridescent uh, hairs to them and they'll look almost a brownish grayish color but in the right light they will show up a metallic blue and they're very gorgeous tarantulas. So I'm really excited about having them. I'm glad that they're doing well and uh, I can't wait till they get some size on them and we can start seeing those colors. So look for more updates on these little guys in the future, in future videos that I'll make. So for my next update, you may remember my Salmopius cambridgei. I did a video where I did a, a, a enclosure transfer, a rehousing for her and uh, she's my biggest girl and she was this gorgeous fawn colored and her abdomen was incredibly fat and uh, it was a real easy transfer into this terrarium right here or this vivarium and um, when I transferred her over I was pretty excited about putting her in a bigger uh, um, enclosure because she needed the extra room the other one was real small for her and um, <laughs> I, I wanted to do an update on her because I talked about how she likes to sit out and that she makes a great display tarantula well the first thing she did was climb into the cork tube and web herself in and I never saw her after that. <laughs> so um, yeah, so much for her being a good display tarantula. Well, I kept checking in on her just to see how she was doing and she would just be sitting in there, just webbed up in there, minding her own business. And you know, she'd let me know she didn't want me bothering her so I'd leave her alone and I'd check on her again periodically. Well, just last week I checked in on her and I just noticed that she had molted, which of course I pretty much suspected that that's what she was going to be doing. But um, when I looked in there I got a big surprise because I could see her legs sticking out 
and her legs were green and I'm talking a pretty bright green so I'm kind of curious to see what she looks like now after having gone through the molt because she was this beautiful fawn colored but and I know that Salmopius cambridgei um, will have a tendency to have this greenish mossy look especially toward the carapace but I never suspected it on the um, legs you know you can see it pretty clearly on the legs and it might just be the light iridescing off of her off of her hair but I really really want to get a good look at it and I want to show her to you too so let me go ahead and see if I can coax her out and we'll get a good look at her all right so I'm gonna give you a glimpse down the uh, cork tube there and you can see her legs kind of sticking out right there and I'm not sure how well the camera's capturing it, but I'm seeing some green legs. And I didn't realize that that was typical of the um, Trinidad Chevron. They're usually a nice fawn colored, but her legs are clearly green to me. Okay, so let me see if I can coax her out so we can get a good look at her. She may not want to. Ooh, she's being very defensive. It's been about a week. So she's probably hardened up pretty well, but not as well as she could be. And I'm seeing her fangs are, yeah, they're pretty black. Come on. All right, here she comes, here she comes. Come on, girl, come on. All right, now there she is, and oh my goodness. She is a beautiful green color. Nope, oh, she just went right back down, dang it. <clears throat> Let's try this again. Come on, sweetie. at you there we go there we go wow now I don't recall ever seeing one this color before now perhaps she'll change as it gets dull and she's ready for a new molt, but she is clearly green to me. I'm doing a bad job with the video here. There we go. But her little orange legs there, the little tips of them, they're nice and bright. And she is a green color. Now, I don't know about you, but that's exciting to me. Um, I did not realize that they get this green like that. And I've never seen any pictures online or anything like that of a green um, Trinidad Chevron like that. So again, I'll be curious to know if that color will get dull over time when she gets ready to molt again. But I've had her as a sling, probably about two and a half inches or so. And she's gotten up to this size. She's probably about five, maybe six inches right now. 
and uh, I have yet to see her get this nice green color to her. So this is completely different to me. It's completely new and I'm pretty excited about it. I think it looks pretty cool. All right, let's see if I can coax her back into her cork tube so she'll be comfortable again. Because I hate to disturb her, but I just really wanted to show her to you. Come on, sweetie. There you go. And even with all that that I'm doing, she's not being defensive. Um, she did a little bit when she was in her cork tube, but now that she's out, she just wants to be left alone. And uh, she's just trying to move away from the stick as I'm nudging her, but she's not striking at it. She's not thrusting her legs at it or flipping at it or anything like that. She's just kind of going along and getting away from it and trying to get somewhere comfortable and not be disturbed. All right, so let's get you back home. There you go. And she'll work her way, her way back in there. She's getting behind the cork tube, and that's fine. I'll leave her alone, and she'll ma manage to get herself back into the cork tube and, and be fine. And uh, when she fully hardens, if she hasn't already, she'll be ready to take a meal. I don't think she's ready for a meal just yet, so um, I'll leave her alone, and she should be fine probably within another week. The focus of today's video is a rehousing that I'm doing on these two tarantulas. They're both the same species, Kilobrachis fimbriatus, and uh, they're commonly known as the Indian violet tarantula. They come from the Goa region of India, which is on the western coast, and they, their range is a little bit north and south of that region, but not too, too far. Um, pretty extended range for tarantula and um, they are old world species and they are venomous they they are highly venomous they're pretty toxic um, they have not been very uh, defensive in nature as spiderlings and um, that's a pretty good thing but I do know that they are very skittish every time I open the enclosure they tend to want to hide and run but they're very comfortable in their enclosure they are very, very prolific webbers. They web everything up. Um, it's amazing that such a small body can produce so much silk within an enclosure. So they will web everything inside of the enclosure. Once they do that, they'll feel very comfortable there and they'll want to stay there, retreat into their hide, which they kind of make a funnel web. Um, I'm not really nervous about getting bitten. I'm nervous about them getting away um, because they are skittish. They're very, very fast. So um, I do have a catch cup that I'm using. I'm going to use the catch cup method, which I learned from Tom Moran um, on his videos from Tom's Big Spiders. Um, and it, it works very well. It's a very effective method and it's somewhat fool foolproof. You can move a tarantula from one location to another with very minimal risk to yourself and very minimal risk to the tarantula, especially of it getting away. Sometimes they do if you do something wrong, but for the most part it works pretty well. Um, I'm moving them into these round tubs like this, and I chose a round, round tub because they do tend to web everything, and this will kind of keep them centralized in the middle, and they'll web all around. And um, one of the cool things about this species is that they do like to sit out on their web. So they're not a pet hole, so to speak. They don't always go down into their funnels and stay there. They do like to sit out and wait for prey. So they're not that skittish in that they tend to be hidden all the time. So they do display themselves pretty well. Let me go ahead and turn on my light here and I'll show them to you. So right now they, oh, this one just molted it looks like, yeah. Okay, there you go. There's the molt. And when I first got them, they were kind of a dull brown color, but it looks like they're starting to get their adult colors, which is pretty cool. They're, they're beautiful, beautiful species. I think that they are considered probably the most beautiful of the Kilobrachis um, species or genus, should I say. And um, I, I, I tend to agree, they are gorgeous spiders. So um, 
The way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna try to use my little catch cup and coax it in there and then transfer it over to the new enclosure. <clears throat> now I've got the new enclosure set up to where I have pretty much just the cork barks or the, the cocoa fiber substrate and uh, I put a piece of cork bark on top and I got a little kind of hole already made for them, a little cave there, so that it can go in there and hide in there when I first put it in and not be too nervous that it wants to run out and escape. So hopefully this will work for me. If not, you're going to see me moving <laughs> really, really fast trying to get out of the way and trying to make sure I catch the spider at the same time. Alright, so as you can see, I've been pretty much just leaving it sitting here with the lid open and it's nice and webbed up. It's even got a nice thin veil on top where it's webbed up the top right here. And um, it really is not going anywhere. Like I said, they feel comfortable once they web up their enclosure and that's where they wanna stay. They really don't wanna come out of there. But when I start disturbing things, then that's when it's gonna try to book and get out of here. So um, they'll <laughs> abandon ship, so to speak. So that's why I have to be extremely careful because they are very, very fast. All right, let's see if I can do this well. Okay, so as soon as I put the catch cup in there, it ran to the deepest part of its enclosure. And of course, it's got the thin web over the top, so it doesn't want to come out of that. So I'm going to tear up that web a little bit and get that out of the way. And I'll save that molt for later and see if I can sex it. Get off me. All right. So let's see if we can get it to cooperate. Come on, big guy. Looks like no way I ain't moving. All right, come on. There we go. So I've got it moving out of there. The trick is to get it into the cup itself. I'll put the lid on there. There we go. I moved it onto the lid. I'm careful not to pinch his legs, so I'm just kind of lightly holding it. And we'll move that out of the way. I'll put that down there. So I've got the new enclosure set up and I'll just simply transfer it over and if all goes well I can just put it down in there it'll find its hole and stay in there and not want to take off and run so let's see there we go you're in are you good yep there it is all right so he's in his new enclosure he or she hopefully is she and um, I'll just leave it alone because it just molted I'm not going to feed it and I'll let it web its, its enclosure up and it'll feel comfortable and it'll be nice and happy in its new home. So I'm going to go ahead and seal this one up and do the other one. <clears throat> now this one might not prove to be so easy because this one didn't just molt. When they molt they have a tendency to not want to move around too much because they're soft still their bodies haven't completely hardened and all they want to do is just kind of stretch out in one spot and let their bodies harden so that they're nice and uh, firm and then they're ready to kill prey and all that kind of stuff but this guy is not molted so he might be more willing to take off and run instead of just sitting there like the other one just did so when I take off the lid it'll pretty much do the same thing I've dealt with these guys since they were small and uh, I don't have to worry about them running off or anything like that see he's right there in his little tunnel all right there he is so um, they just kind of tend to stay in one spot and they'll go to a light, nice little tunnel that they've made their funnels and they'll stay in there and not want to come out until I drop prey in there and they sense it then they'll come out and get it most of the time they'll attack it in front of me but sometimes they'll get a little bit shy and they'll run from that prey and they won't even try to attack it until after I've sealed it up and put them away um, then I'll just come back and check on them later on and they'll usually be eating it so there he goes he's moving around he's getting a little bit nervous because his lids off 
and uh, he feels the air from the air conditioning on him. Alright, so I'm going to remove some of that webbing from the top. <clears throat> now, let's see if I can do this one a little bit or just as easily. Alright, so I've got to coax him out of his little hole and there it goes. Come on, there you go. Uh oh, nope, don't escape. There you go. All right, now let's see if I can get the lid underneath. This one's gonna be a little bit tougher, I can tell. All right, big guy. Come on, come on. No, oh, don't you go, don't you go. No, don't squeeze. All right, so he's gone up to the top which is good for me because now I can just transfer them over. Alright, so I have them successfully out of the enclosure and into a catch cup. See them there? And now I'll transfer it to its new enclosure and hopefully it will be calm and go straight to where he's supposed to go. So this makes it easy, especially when they're up top like that, because I can just remove the bottom and then bring it down and try to secure it and then see if I can get it to run out of there. Oh, my cork bark might be a little too big for me to do this. There we go. I need a narrower stick. I'm going to find something smaller. Alright, I managed to find a uh, paintbrush with a very narrow handle to it, so hopefully this will help me out. Um, again, I'm going to just drop the lid like this and try to put it in there. And I'm kind of kind of putting it over the mouth of the hole that I made on there so that hopefully it will go straight down into that and try to hide in there. So let me see if I can coax it down. He doesn't want to come down from there. He likes it there. He wants to stay. That's just my luck. Come on, big guy. Come on. Now, this is supposed to be a defensive species. I've seen them defensive when they're adults, but again, this little spiderling he just wants to be left alone. He's trying to <laughs> make himself as small as possible on this upper corner or upper edge of this catch cup and really doesn't want me messing with him. Okay, so he's in. He dropped down. He's trying to move around, so I'm just going to kind of leave him alone a little bit before I put the lid on it. And I'm going to remove this real quick and hopefully it won't panic. It's holding on, so I'm going to leave him alone. Okay, come on guys. Go in the hole. Alright, he's trying to get out of there. There we go. Alright, so he's sitting in there. Not doing too much panicking. He's just kind of curled up in the corner right there. And um, I'm going to leave him there and I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on. But I just want to get you, let you get a good look at it. Um, the, they're not a large species. They do tend to get about five inches. The females do. Males tend to be a lot smaller. I've heard that they get to about two and a half inches and they mature really fast. Um, they are a fast growing species. I've had these guys a little less than a year and they've grown quite a bit in that time period. Um, yeah, I keep looking down because I don't want it to escape. But um, they're, they're awesome. They're, they're really, really beautiful and they love to web up their enclosures. And uh, then they just kind of sit out on top of the, uh, the webbing, waiting for prey to drop in. Um, their web also makes a great uh, con like container almost for water. You just dribble water on it and it stays, it beads up on the web and that's where they get their water from. Um, I don't really put a, a, 
a watering dish in there for them because they will just web it all up. So I just kind of water on top of their um, their webbing and they drink from there and that's where they get their water. And um, they do like it a little bit moist in their enclosure. I think about 70% humidity, which is, you know, about average for some of your tropical species. So, you know, they do like a little bit of moisture in there, but not, not you know, not too much. You know, you don't want to go overboard with it. You don't want just soaking wet substrate, but you do want to keep it kind of moist. So I tend to kind of go overboard with the watering a little bit just to make sure that that substrate has stayed moist. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put it up. Okay, so I've had two successful rehousings here using the catch cup method. It works very well. It's a very effective method, um, very hands free. So you kind of, you know, don't risk yourself and you don't risk your spider getting hurt. You just have to be really careful when you do it and making sure that you don't pinch any of their limbs or anything like that. Um, I did put them, purposely put them in a larger enclosure than they needed. Originally I was going to put them in one of those little snap type boxes that was a little bit bigger than what they were in originally, those deli cups. But because they're such great webbers, um, I figured I didn't want to disturb them too much and they grow relatively fast. So I would end up having to do another enclosure change at another period when they got a little bit more size to them. So I figured I'd go ahead and give them a, a lot more room this time and that will give them room to grow and uh, you know they'll they'll make themselves nice and secure and I don't really have to worry about them not finding their prey or anything like that because they do web up everything so I went with a little bit larger than they needed um, I probably will do one final enclosure change when they do get bigger in size and that will be their adult enclosure which will be a little bit bigger than this so Again, I don't want to do a whole lot of transferring with these guys because they are so fast and prone to bolt. But as you saw, it was easy. You know, it was not something that I, that was really stressful. I didn't have to worry about them taking off. One had just molted. The other one was, you know, not molted and, and ready to go. So they both ended up being fairly easy. Hope you learned something from this. Um, I learned myself by watching YouTube videos, watching Tom Moran, uh, watching Petco from Dark Den. And, uh, you know, I get a lot of techniques from these people. So hopefully I can pass this on to you and you can see how easy it can be for you as well. You shouldn't be afraid of dealing with some of these old world species if you're wanting to make the jump into old world. Um, I was very afraid when I first did that. You know, I was dealing with with a lot of your docile species, your new world species, but I really wanted to make that jump into old world. Um, and I kind of made the jump, you know, full full blast. I went head on because I ended up getting two H Max, which are extremely defensive and uh, I, I learned you know trial by fire and uh, it, it really taught me a lot about how to deal with some of these quicker species and some of these more defensive species that are prone to bite as opposed to run or flicking hairs and things like that. I mean, face it when you're dealing with some of these docile new world species transferring and things like that are very very easy so you kind of get spoiled with them when you're dealing with arboreals when you're dealing with old world things get a lot faster and you have to really be on your toes and you have to be calm. Calm is the key. If you are calm about it and you know what you're doing, you prep ahead of time. I mean, I've got a catch cup. I've got an extra catch cup just in case it takes off running and so on. Then these things tend to go a whole lot smoother and you don't really have to worry about getting into trouble with them at all. That's one of the biggest mistakes that people make. A lot of the times when people get bitten, it's because they're doing enclosure changes and uh, you know they really don't know what they're doing and they don't know what to expect. So then the worst does happen. So that's my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please hit the like button. If you wanna see more, then subscribe. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas. Brackies from Brie. <laughs>